Hey, so I'm trying a new format where I talk about things that I just find quite useful. And in this video, I will talk about asynchronous messages and notifications in Postgres and some use cases. And I'll show you some articles and maybe compare it at the end with something like RabbitMQ. So I'll put a link in the description for the documentation for the notify and listen commands. Like this, these are the two commands that we use to actually implement asynchronous messages in Postgres. So I have here this simple example. This orange circle is the data. So let's say we or what the notify and listen commands allows us to do is the following. So when you have uh, the notifier that will use the notify command to send some data and this data it will be delivered into a specific channel. And the channels are distinguished by just a simple string. Similar to the WebSocket word, every channel will have its own unique string. So for example, this notifier is connected to this database. The notifier will send a data on a channel called my channel. And all of these listeners, the three listeners, are listening to the, to the my channel channel. So notifier will send a notification. What will happen is, We will all of these listeners that listening to the same channel will get this data. That's the whole point, or that's the whole like work workflow of this uh, notify and listen commands in Postgres. This is very different from something like RabbitMQ. In RabbitMQ, when you like post a message, it will be added into one queue, and if that queue have has like multiple consumers. What will happen that RabbitMQ will just forward this message, message to one of them, I think based on some round robin algorithm. But not all, like, not, if you have one EQ with multiple consumers in RabbitMQ, not all of them will get the same message, only one of them. You can actually simulate the same thing that happens in Postgres, like all of them getting the same data uh, by creating a queue for, each, for every consumer. Like there are always some ways to simulate what every tool does, but like this is maybe the first difference that you will see. Uh, the second thing is, so you send the data to all of these listeners. Uh, maybe that's a use case that you actually want and you want every like consumer or listener in our case to actually in interact with the data or do something with it. Let's say this one failed. Uh, I will do this. This one failed. Now, like by default, you don't have any kind of like re-queuing this data somewhere and, or reprocess it or do anything with it. You have to do that logic on your own. So that's something as well to remember. Uh, failed, failed tasks, like you need to handle it on your own, uh, like kind of from kind of from scratch. I'm not super expert when it comes to robot MEQ, but I believe there are some ways to handle these kind of things. But in Postgres, it's not. Uh, and this is why what, during my research, I found some people online talking about, like, if you want to use this, maybe use it in places where, like, um, errors and, like, maybe, yeah, errors are quite tolerant. Like, yeah, like your system is okay with having some, like, errors here and there or, like, missing that, maybe. Uh, for example, I... Came across this article by Dimitri. He has very, like, he wrote very nice articles about uh, concurrent Postgres. I will put a link in the description, but I, because this link gives me 404, I'll try to find it. But in this article, he explains how you can use the notify and listen command uh, to implement like a caching system that invalidates the cache based on the notification value. So. You, you add a new value into, into your database based on some conditions, the notifier will just send data to the consumers or the listeners, and they will invalidate the cache. I mean, in, in his case, we have only one listener. So the listener will invalidate the cache and uh, create a new cache, like for faster reads, I guess. But yeah, it's a very nice article, and he goes uh, about some edge, some cases that you need to be aware of. Uh, and I'll also talk about them, but you can also just read his article. I think I think it's very uh, important. So, yeah, one other thing that we need to know about this: if you 
if you send i'll show you that in the code so i have here another example this is one way to send notifications so i'm connecting to my postgres uh, database and i'm using the pg notification and i recommend using this function because you can have dynamic channel names so you can join with strings or concatenate them and you can here actually use fun functions like json build object uh, because you can only send the strings as a payload and you can send json because json is just a string and so you can do this which is very nice i mean the other way it's just using the notify command uh which looks like like this i don't think it's a good idea to use it just use the pg notify but yeah so in this example i am uh like sending a notification to my channel i'm sending three notifications in the same transaction and notice the same the first notification and the last notification holds the same exact payload in the same exact transaction. In this case, what Postgres will do, it will send two events in the correct order. So it will send one, then a three to my channel, to every listener. So all of these listeners will get one and the three, but it will not duplicate one again. So if you have the same payload notification, in the same transaction, it will not be duplicated. It will be treated as one uh, distinct, distinct event. And to show you a demo of this, I have these two, let's say, microservices running. Clear the console. Yeah, so both of them are running. And I'm using a package called pg listen it's very nice package uh, not sure if it's maintained or not not sure if it needs to be maintained like maybe it's just that's it but yeah it's very nice package i'll put a link in the description and what i'm doing i have just two services that listens to the my channel event here and just logs the data so let me do this to make it shorter to read Now to actually show you a proof, now if I am like notified of I send these three notifications, I just run the query. If I go to the console, I will see one three instead of seeing one three one, which I think is very nice. Or at least I'm not sure if it's nice, but that's the behavior. Uh, it won't duplicate things. Uh, it won't duplicate events or notifications if they have the same payload in the same transaction. But if they happen in different transactions, that to that's totally fine. I will I'll also recommend reading about the documentation. In the, I will put a link in the description. So one key notes also, notifi notify interacts with SQL transactions in some important ways. If a notify is executed inside a transaction, the notify events are not delivered until and unless the transaction is committed. This means if your transaction did not commit, got like something bad happened, no notifies will be actually like emitted to the uh, listeners, which is a good thing. It makes sense. Like imagine receiving an event about something updated, but it did not even get committed. So that's nice. This is nice. And it's also here says like this means notifi notifications will only be sent between transactions. So every time a transaction ends, they will send notifications. Uh, they are, they here, here they are saying the same example I showed you. If you have the same payload in the same transaction multiple times, it will be only sent one time. And they are hold, like they tell you, we are also holding the, we also hold or keep the order of the notif notifications in the same order. I just showed you that. Uh, because I think that would be kind of a bummer to C3 one instead of 1.3, right? So, like in, in, the, in this case, because we have like one duplicated at the end, so they keep the order when they say, when if they say something, if they see something at the beginning, it will just say that. That's, that's nice. Um, at the end, they are talking about one use, when it's something, one example, sorry. So imagine if I also... If not, if 
if this microservice or this client, whatever, this connection is not uh, only a notifier, it's also a listener. So I have my fourth listener as my notifier, and it sends some data. This data, in this case, will also be sent back to the uh, listener, to the, sorry, to the notifier. So it sent the data, it will be reached to everyone. Also itself, because it listened to the same uh, channel, let's assume oh, they all listening to the my channel, and I somewhere here in the code, in the node service, I sent uh, a message uh, to the same channel, I will get it back. So that could be something that you don't want. And in the code, I will show you, I can show you this. Uh, yeah. So I, in using PG, PG listen, you can actually just call your subscriber instance, notify the name of the channel, the JSON payload, and that's it. Or the JavaScript object will be converted into a JSON. So I will send this every two seconds. And notice the two microservices will actually get the event, like even though this one actually sent that event. So yeah, I mean, it could be something that you want, but that's something uh, that you should be careful about, I guess. But one thing they recommend recommend you to like deal with this is to use the PID. So every event, if you scroll up, every event or every notification contains the three things, the channel name, uh, the process ID or the session server process ID and the payload, which is like the, it's this string in our example, it's, it's, this, it's this JSON in our example, sorry, this one. So, but in using PG listen, I couldn't find a way to get the process ID. I'm not sure if it's me or the package, but there is a simple like solution to this for each service that listens or subscribes to the notifications you can give it a, a, like a static id so service 01 and just like you can call it consumer id you can call it service id you can call it anything you want and just to check if like i can do it here if payload dot uh, equal id then don't do anything like return If I do this, I should not see any kind of messages anymore. Like, at least that's one way to solve it. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about. So one use case is to do, I found actually in this article. Or I didn't read the whole thing, but I really like this uh, trigger implementation. Or this function that will be used in a trigger. Uh, after delete and update and insert. So if you are deleting a row, it will send a notification to a channel called events with the previous data, because in, in, in triggers, you can uh, have a reference to the old record and the new record. So if you are deleting, they will send the new, the old record. If you are adding or updating, it will send the new record. I think this could be a use case where you create this historical data of each row of each transaction that happened on the row so you can have yeah you can have historical data i think that's very nice use case so you can maybe catch all of these events in one of your services and just store them inside like any kind of database mongodb and just have a history for each row i will also put a link in the description for this article i think it could be nice uh, i believe this is everything i wanted to talk about this maybe yeah, one thing is uh, that it tells you there is a queue that holds notifications that have been sent but not yet processed by all listening sessions. If this queue become full, transactions calling notify will fail at commit. The queue is quite large, 8 gigabyte is in a standard installation of Postgres and should be sufficiently sized for almost every use case. That's true. But what they mean is, um, like, sorry, this means that, I think they say it here. Um, so however, no cleanup can take place if a session executes listen and then enters a transaction for a long time. So they have this queue, they put all of the notifications there. You have, for example, here three listeners. Uh, 
and the data will be delivered to all of them. This queue will still hold the message. It will still be here until all of these like listeners will actually commit their transaction and finish. Uh, if one of them like stayed for a long time and did not commit, st stayed running for a long time and did not commit, this message will stay in the queue. They are telling you this, but at the same time, they are telling you it's eight gigabytes. So it's quite large and should be sufficient. And yeah, I think I think that's it. Maybe now if you want to compare it with post with RabbitMQ, I'm not super good with RabbitMQ. I'm just a beginner. Um, I think we talked about this at, at the beginning, but if we send the data to one of the listeners and it failed, that's it. It's done. In, in RabbitMQ, there are some ways to actually solve this. And also there are some ways in like you can you can implement these kind of logics logic here as well like you can handle failure like if this failed you can store it somewhere and re like refetch it and do anything with it like you can do that but maybe in like why redo something that someone already did like you can just use RabbitMQ I think it depends on your case in this uh in, in this article they are just storing the cache and if the cache is invalidated and we have a bug we can just easily invalidate every cache we have and that's it I mean it depends on the case but that, that's I think this article is very nice. Um, so and one thing is one another difference is uh, when when the data reaches the database and emits it to every consumer or listener. Uh, in our in Postgres example, this will reach every one of them. But in RabbitMQ, I think we also talked about this. It will only reach one consumer. There are some ways like to have a queue for every consumer, but maybe. You don't want that but maybe like it depends on your case but i think this uh synchronous messages and notifications and postgres are very nice uh, i might use it in some personal projects to implement some things like especially this historical data i quite i quite like it uh yeah like this seems like a solid thing in, in my eyes like you can do some nice things with it like just listen to that to these events and do anything you want, like real-time notifications. Um, yeah. Also, there are there is this article, but about implementing uh, a message queue in, with Postgres um, for your job queues. I think it's very nice. I'll put a link in the description for it. And also, I came across uh, this article or this question, which is also nice. And there is this package. It's called PG Listen Exchange. It will listen to the notify events and just put them into uh, the Robot MEQ queues. So I think that's very nice as well. So you can have the Robot MEQ power with Postgres if you want. And there is this guy that uh, actually said that he used this and uh, for some case. So I think that would be it i'm not sure if this i mean depend if this video, video does like well in like in, in my channel statistics <laughs> maybe i'll do some more videos like that but yeah it's just we are not writing a lot of code maybe i will leave this in some uh guest i'll put a link put a link in the description but yeah so i think this this could be very this could be quite useful i won't take any more time than this